Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. When we first started talking about me hosting a celebrity interview show, I said I only want to do it if it's going to be bold. Now why would I do in my bedroom bugs people is beyond me. Straightforward. I really, really, really want people to understand what I do. Spontaneous. Magic gonna take Shaquille out on his own game. Rock, rock. Oh, that's good. The game is real. The game is real. And most of all, fun. Well, do I have to do it till I make one? Of course. <laughs> well, guess what? We did it. spent most of my life in the public eye, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But I'm also a big fan of celebrities, and that's another reason I wanted to do this show. Over the next hour, we'll visit with some of the hottest and most intriguing celebrities in the world. They're among the number one names in movies, TV, music, and sports. I get to go one-on-one -on -one with Roseanne and Tom Arnold, Garth Brooks, Shaquille O'Neal, and the one and only Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg is probably the hardest working woman in showbiz, and she's breaking all the rules. They told her film stars don't do TV. She responded with Baghdad Cafe, Star Trek, and a talk show. Then they said her look would cost her her career. She made a half dozen more movies, and now her look is everywhere. Heads really turned when she got seven and a half million dollars for making Sister Act 2. Add to that her Emmy, Grammy, Image Award, Golden Globes, and an Oscar, it could be said that Whoopi is doing something right. And if that isn't enough, this year she's hosting, yes, hosting, the Academy Awards. Well, I see, I'm looking at you now, uh, good on heels, uh, man, where's your tennis shoes at? What happened when I first met you? That's tennis so shoes. That hasn't changed at all. That's... That's still me. This is because I'm working. I'm on a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not my please. I can walk around eight inch heels all day long. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm me, baby. Speaking of the movie that you're shooting, you're playing a lesbian. Huh? Yes. How was that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I keep trying to figure out if I'm supposed to, like, feel something different than I would if I was playing a straight woman, and I don't seem to. It just, you know, it's a very interesting thing because people want you to look like what they think right. a lesbian should look like. And it's so hard, you know, because lesbians like black people, like Spanish people, come in so many hues and colors and, you know, ways that I just kind of say, well, I'm just going to be me and kind of look longingly. <laughs> you know, and not look at the cameraman longingly, but look at Mary Louise Parker longingly, so... You know, in, in your role playing, you kind of buck the system in terms of you play so many different roles. Well, I, I just thought it would be best for me so that I knew what I was capable of. And then it wouldn't matter if anybody else picked up on it. But I know what I can do, and so I've chosen to, you know, do these movies, you know, from Color Purple to Jumpin' Jack to Fatal Beauty, which is, you know, one girl, one gun, shooting bad guys to Clara's Heart, you know, so there's a range there. Because when I watch American movie classics, you know, I... I'm always amazed at the range of the actors, you know, the Betty Davises and, and the Jimmy Stewart's. That's what I want. You know, I want range and I want longevity. I read somewhere you said that uh, when you were a little girl, that uh, watching the, the awards, that you always dreamt of being a part of the oh, yeah. Oscars. Yeah. So you've been nominated, you won one, yeah. and now you're hosting. I'm hosting the Oscars. How deep is that? Come yeah. On. So how do you feel about that? Well, I think it's hysterical. Yeah. Because, you know, last year there was this big stink with all these actors who were making political statements as they were presenting the awards. And then they turned around and asked me to host. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they've done. They don't know what they've done, you know. So I, I'm actually pretty glad because it's, it is exciting, you know, and part of what we do is political. So, you know, I, I don't know that they'll ask me to do this again. You know, they snatched my behind out of the Grammys <laughs> right after. I mean, as soon as I was done the, the last time I did this, mm, mm. Not again. Not again. <laughs> we'll get Gary Sandler. Thank you very much. Have you decided 
what you're wearing. That's what I want to know. I'm going to wear some clothes. Yeah. I was thinking about doing it new, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably going to be as simple as any of the, the hosts have been over the years. Mm -hmm. So because it is not my night. Okay. You know, okay. I, I could glamour up, I suppose, and change my clothes eight or nine times, but then that would be like throwing focus in the wrong direction. I'm there basically to move the show along. Yeah. You know, I have to look good. Yeah. But I'll, you know, have a little cleavage, a little leg, you know, because I have, it is an opportunity. Nine billion people, I can find me somebody to hang with, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, the brothers didn't call because I don't look like, you know, the girl most of the brothers want to be hanging with. Oh, we hate each other so bad that uh, we love each other. Yeah. Well, we How weird is that to, uh, to hate someone so much that we love them? I don't recall getting a phone call from the brothers saying, come on, let's go to the movies. You know, again, it's, it's, we have to break it down to that. Where are those cards and letters, honey? You know? Yeah. Come yeah. on. You you want to talk about who I'm going to bed with and you haven't offered? I don't think you have anything to say. Well, I was watching the show now on Arsenio. Oh, yeah. And uh, you talked about the brothers now. They haven't been calling. No, they, no. You know, and it's, what's funny to me is that I've been around for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I've always sort of been pretty open about what I was about and where I was at. And I've always, you know, from my hair to my look to the sneakers, to, and nobody's ever been satisfied. Now, why would I do in my bedroom bugs people is beyond me. You know, I, I just find it interesting. So I get a lot of letters from brothers going, you shouldn't be going out this white dude. Blah, blah, blah. Forgetting, of course, that I've had many boyfriends. Right. You know, nobody right. paid any attention because they didn't care. Now they care. Now... I'm going out with a nice big old tall guy, mm -hmm. you know, and it's cool. And, you know, the brothers didn't call because I don't look like, you know, the girl most of the brothers want to be hanging with. You know, the, the what's that child's name? The married to that baseball player. Uh, Halle Berry. Ha Halle Berry. They don't want you to look like Halle Berry. I'm too old. Is there a difference between black and white men and, and dating them? I don't think so. Men are men. You know, when the dogs are dogs. You know? And they call it what it is, you know? But I don't think so. You know, because men have their own sets of problems, you know, that they come to a relationship with. Because I think men at our, at our age and our age group are taught that men behave a specific way. You know, that they have specific responsibilities. And when you need anything that's outside of that, it's kind of like, well, what do we do now? You know? And there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of ego wrapped up in that. And I'm not the kind of woman who will displace her ego for the, her man's ego. Our egos have to coexist. Because mm -hmm. I have a huge ego. Right. And I need a man who is as strong as I am who believes in himself as much as I believe in him and in me. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's a very fine line, it's very touchy, and money always gets in the way. Mm. Mm. Money's ugly, bro. I know you got some of that. Well, you know, <laughs> not as much as they keep writing about that, you know. There's, there's money and then there's money. Right. You know, right. Oprah got money. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, I got some money. Okay. Right. Oprah had money. Uh, big you money. Know, big money's mammy, as they used to say. <laughs> Open that money's mammy. Okay. okay. A couple months ago, with I saw you on Comic Relief, and you sort of made some comments that upset some people. You said, "Don't call me an African American. Call me a, an American." That's right. Can you explain that? Yeah. I look at history. Whenever someone singles out a group of people, bad stuff always comes. Mm -hmm. You know. The Jews in Germany always thought of themselves as Germans. But when the Germans decided they were Jews first, they were able to be carted away. My history takes place in this country. We built Boston. We built the South. Mm -hmm. This is where my history starts for five generations. And as soon as somebody tells me I'm an African American, that seems to negate a whole lot of things that are uh, by right mine as an American. Okay. So as soon as you say I'm an American and I am entitled, and yes, you do owe me 
just like you owe every other American. As soon as you say, I'm an African American, people start with, well, why do we owe you this? And we didn't mean to bring you all over here. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Okay. Give me my due. The Bill of Rights says I'm due this. The Constitution says I am due this, and under the law, I want it. And so I just, I don't want any more labels, you know? Because labels allow people to drop you through the cracks. It allows people to say, those people do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not having it. And the people that were offended, fine, let them struggle for an identity. But I know who I am. I know what I am. Mm -hmm. You know? And yeah, somewhere back there in my lineage, there are, what are we? There are Jews, there are Chinese people, there are Indians, and there are black people. You don't meet five uh, generation Russians who call themselves Russian Americans. Right. You know, they're Americans. Mm -hmm. Give it up. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> what gives you the strength just to, just to keep going? Because I know so many people expect me not to. Mm. People expect that you will fall and stumble and shift and change. But I like me. I've always turned myself on. I make myself laugh. You know, I piss myself off. Mm -hmm. You know, but I like me. And I, I'm going to keep being me. And I don't care what comes. You know, and a lot of stuff has come in my direction. <laughs> you know, but that's okay. Why do you think people want you to fail so bad? Because I don't fit the norm. I never have fit the norm, and I don't go the way of the salmon. You know, salmon go one way. Yeah. I want to see what's down this way. Uh -huh. Because, you know, you can always go that way. But think of what you might be missing. If the door that you open may not always, you know, have Prince Charming on the other side, it may be the tiger. You know, the story of the lady of the tiger. You, one door will kill you, and one door will keep you going. Periodically, I get slayed. You know, but I come back because the slang is always so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just got to come back and see what else is in store, you know? Because I, it's hard for people. It's hard for people to, to let you be who you are. Does it make you feel good that you're now the highest paid actress? I mean, over $7 million. Oh, have, dollars haven't you heard that? Uh, oh, yeah, but darling, you know, since Julia got back, they, they've upped the ante, so now she is the highest paid actress. But that's okay, because I was there first. <laughs> <laughs> so since she's now the highest paid, yeah. are you going to go back in to, to just say, hey, I got to be the highest paid? No, I've made my point. Mm -hmm. The point has been made. You know, Raggedy Ann has left the building. So Gavin and I put on the child trip walks and walked up the whole car and I go, we're doing it. <laughs> I bounced at a club that I in college. And I can count on these fingers how many people I had to throw at that club. And my wife was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> She's the biggest star on television that says he's the key reason for her success. Roseanne and Tom Arnold, the dynamic duo who love nothing better than a good challenge. Whether it's fighting network censorship or taking me on two on one. What do you think? Let me Okay, good call. Good call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Roseanne tells it on her new book, My Lies, but we've got the scoop that was too hot to print. Two of you met while working at a, a comedy club. Yeah. Was it uh, instant attraction to one another? Tom, uh, tell me. Tell it me. Was, I was instantly attracted to her. See, she was such a, uh, a bitch. I think that's <laughs> she was so funny and so mean. And, uh, you know, I, I walked in. I remember the second I saw her, she was standing at the bar drinking a cup of coffee, and they cuddled her said, Tom, I'd like to meet Roseanne. And she turned out, hi. And then she we talked, and I went on stage. She walked, she wouldn't talk to me until she saw my act to see if it was like, okay. You can't okay. do that with your comment, because, like, you can't risk if you talk to a bad act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll you down right back. Was he a bad act? No, I loved his act. I was cracking up, and then I thought, oh, good, you know, I'll be able to talk to him. So who made the first move? Well, we just kind of like hooked up and we, he said, do you want to go to the party where all these other comics are going? So I said, yeah, because nobody ever invited me before because I had kind of a really bad reputation. Well, as, she was known as a mom. Yeah. <clears throat> plus I was like mean and yeah. uh, 
Well, it was mostly guy comics, so they never wanted a girl comic mm -hmm. around, you know. They only like waitresses and stuff. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> so he invited me. I was real excited. It was the first time that another comic had ever invited me to a comic party. Uh -huh. We stayed overnight at this house that all the comics always stayed at. Yeah. And uh, I didn't live there at the time, but I told her I did. I said, it's okay, we can stay here. And I remember we slept on the floor next to you, so we didn't do anything. I, if I looked at you for a minute, though, before I went to bed, I kind of put my arm around you like this. I was thinking, and then I, I, we just went to sleep. Do you remember that? Well, tell me about the funny story about the first time you guys had sex. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, my God. Somebody's got to say something now. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've been friends for six years. And, you know, when you're comics, you talk about a lot of stuff when you're friends, okay. you know. You talk about sex, but you don't really plan on happening to be between you. By then, we started talking about it. Seriously, we were both unhappy with our relationships, and we were talking about crossing over a little bit. And uh, I was scared to do it. She was scared to do it. But one day... It was really a wimp about it. Well, I, was still <laughs> I was engaged, and you were married. I don't know if that's being a wimp. Yeah. Well, he says, you know, we're going to uh, wait till you file and this and that and the other. And, <clears throat> but I was leaving for three months, mm -hmm. and so was he. Okay. So I says, well, you know, I think we should think about doing something before it was three months. And mm -hmm. he, he's like, no, I'm, we, we should only remain friends till it's right. And I said, okay, but I'll tell you what, when I'm in New York... I'm already separated. I asked when I separate, and you know, if you're not there, you know, I'll just go find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling, but she still threatens today. Am I? Are you talking about when you drove up to my house? And so, I, and then he, he kind of went. He thought for a minute, and then he goes, "Yeah, I guess that is kind of true." And uh, so then I came over to his house, and I said, "Come down here." And I was in the, my Jeep with my sister. I said, "Get in the car. I want to talk to you for a minute." So he got in, and I put on the childproof locks and locked up the whole car, and I go, we're doing it. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I asked, I go, I don't, I don't want to hear anything. This is what we're going to do, and we're doing it now. And uh, We were to a colonial motel. It was he's, $50. He goes, yeah, but you forgot my favorite part. But you go, okay, but only because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have any money or anything. So I had to borrow my own my sister. <laughs> and uh, I think she's suing me for like 800 times that money. But uh, anyway, so then we went up to this room and we came down there. He went in the bathroom and locked the door. I never told that. I never told that part of the And so I'm banging around the door, get out here! <laughs> I, I went into that long because we were only in the room for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Ooh, 10 minutes. But it was a great 10 minutes. Okay, it was I the best you. 10 minutes. I mean, seriously, I came out of there. Okay, you were nervous. You were ready. Who, were, who was the initiator? Um, I, I actually was the successful of the two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never told that story before. Well, I'm glad you told the story. I called him up on the phone and his girlfriend was there, and I go, "What do you expect that I'm supposed to do now?" Six <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Yes, I understand, and we will we will go to the improv, and we will each, each do twenty. <laughs> I'll let you do your twenty first this time. That's what yeah. I said. Twenty minutes. So what, what makes?" And I see that you two get along so well. What makes your love so strong? The hate that's the inside hate. of us. That's, 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 that's what I was thinking. Oh, we hate each other so bad that uh, we love each other. Yeah. Well, we How weird friends, is that, so, to hate someone so much that you love them? We can't possibly stand to see each other. We don't want anybody to be with anybody else. Yeah, we, got yeah. That we don't feel like we should inflict ourselves on any <laughs> other two people. We all heard about your painful past, uh, child abuse. A mental disorder. But what we haven't heard about is your recovery and uh, how that's going and how time has helped you. Can you explain that? Well, I think I'm like everybody else who has what I have and goes into therapy. It takes a long time. It's a lot of work. It's painful to, uh, you know, remembering stuff is one thing. Uh -huh. But then when you get the feelings with the memory, that's really awful. And I was able to remember things for a while, and then the feelings started to come with the memories. And that's very scary. But, uh, you know, uh, it is, it's very uh, a high percentage of uh, treatability. And, you know, I'm not the only person like that has this. There's millions of people with it. And so I just, you know, encourage them to keep doing the work, and I will too. But what's been the hardest part of, of the process? Uh, is it the kids? Uh, uh, no, all the hard stuff is just within inside of me, you know. I uh, 
and then I get real. Uh, I, I'm the kind. Of, I, I do this thing where uh, if I'm going, have, if I'm having pain or you know trouble handling things emotionally, I, I, I like to isolate. You know, I don't want to talk or see anybody, and uh, you know, I I need to just you know sometimes I'll I'll go places and you know find myself in other places. <laughs> I don't know how I got there, but. Uh, I like to be all by myself, and that's hard because, you know, uh, people know me everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'll forget yeah. that I'm famous. Yeah. And so like, I'll just be walking, and some, so somebody comes up from behind me and goes, Hey! and grabs me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Excuse you, you know, yeah. when you're not uh, remembering that you're famous. So there's different people inside of you then? Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of different people in there. Uh, 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 a lot of kids, mm -hmm. mostly kids, okay. boys yeah, and girls, teenagers, teenagers. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. uh, you know, but some are male and some are female, mm -hmm. some, are, some don't talk because they're babies. Mm -hmm. Some are physically gifted, athletic. Yeah. 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 They, so when she goes into the, another state or another person, mm -hmm. then you have an apartment to get away, huh? Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I, well, a couple of them don't like him. Yeah, oh. but they don't like me at all. And, and see, the thing is that these, these these personalities were developed to protect Rosie as a child from the abuse that she was going through. So they're still there to protect. And let's say I had a habit of being late. I would be late, you know, because I'd always schedule my appointments where I was one kind of one behind. Mm -hmm. She, I would be late when we left town. I'd be late when we got when we got back to town. This was a trigger for her. Anytime I was late, it triggered her, and she switched. She would, you know, go from being Rosanne to whatever, Martha or somebody that was very upset with me and needed to protect her. That's something I had to work on because I was causing that. What do you two do for fun? I got this big roller dance. I'm not getting trouble. Anyway, I had to uh, stop her from doing that. Yeah, Once she, she, she called Norman Mailer and did a crank call to him. That's the last thing. I'm going to call him all up. Norman Schwartz called. He wouldn't let me call Schwartz. But I had Bill Clinton's number at the White House night. See, I call him up and I go, I act like I'm from England. <laughs> I go, I've had your baby and you've never sent me any child support. <laughs> and, so, and, then, and then my assistant goes, Daddy, are you coming home? <laughs> to end it up, what do you love about her? What makes her so special? Well, she's, uh, at, you know, every, you talk about somebody being one of a kind. I mean, I, I feel, you know, so lucky with her because she is one of a kind, I mean, that, in, on the whole planet. And, uh, you know, she's a very, she's a very, she's a good mother. I always say this. She's a good mother, which means a lot of different things to me personally. Uh -huh. And she's just a very loving person who is always entertaining. It never lets me down. I always surprise us, no matter good times or bad times. I just, even at the worst times we have, she does stuff that just makes me smile because it's so, it's, it's just so her. What do you love about Tom? That, uh, he's so smart. And he's smart about people and he's smart about, uh, business and, uh, He's got so much inside him that people haven't even begun to see yet. I hope they do. I've always seen it. And uh, I like him because I think he's uh, a one-of-a-kind <laughs> person, too. Mm -hmm. But also because he uh, he is always looking out for me. And, uh, and I always look out for him, too. But he really looks out for me. And he's like got... Uh, a list of stuff for all of our employees that, you know, it's like number one on the list is that Rosie has to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so nice to do in the business. You know, that's what's number one in the business. That makes me feel good. He's uh, really funny. He's the funniest person I've ever known. Mm -hmm. And uh, he cracks me up. And he also is berserk and out of his mind. But he doesn't think he is. But everyone else, <laughs> everyone else who knows him is like, they call him the Quaker, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just how he is. He's yeah. he's the Quaker Oats guy. He's very stern, mm -hmm. very conservative, mm -hmm. but then he does these way out things that are <laughs> very interesting. In no modesty, just all.
Honestly, yeah. I would love to see how far my career would be if I had gotten in the way of it a couple of times. And I one day I was watching Dr. J, and he just came through and dunked on somebody. <laughs> and I said to myself, I want to do that. There aren't many country western artists who can claim selling more than 30 million records in just five years. But then again, there aren't many singers of any style who can compete with Garth Brooks. His unique sound continues to earn him millions of fans outside of country music, making him a superstar in the world of pop as well. When we got together recently in L.A., we discovered one thing that neither of us do well. Shoot pool. You know what, so about 10 years of knowing each other, this is how I met her. Was that, was that a, a pool hall? A uh, shooting pool. Well, you know what, why don't you tell, tell the people about that, because that's an interesting story. Uh, how how you actually met. That's fate. I mean, it's just weird how, how some things just are meant to be, even though the situation seems bad at the time. But, uh, you know, we was talking about earlier, you being a DJ in a club, and I bounced at a club uh, during college. And, uh, I can probably, and I can count on these fingers how many people I had to throw out of that club, and my wife was one of them. <laughs> but it's weird how fate happens, but that's how we met. And um, she just, uh, it was a bad night for her, a good night for me, you know what I mean? So it was just, it was a good day in my life, and it was two and a half years later we got married. What, what happened? Uh, she was in the restroom or something? Yeah, she, she got in a, a fight with a, or a dispute with a couple of the patrons, I believe is what we're supposed to say. And uh, I had to ask her, I just had to ask her to leave. And then she was all in black, black hat, black shirt, jeans, boots. It was like, wow. And I just, I just thought she was, I thought she was real cool. Let's talk about heroes. This ain't a four hour show, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got tons of them. Uh, you know, in the country field, uh, George Strait is the king for me. George Jones is, is what I think everybody that ever wants to get into country music wants to end up as. Um, probably the greatest singer-songwriter in country music. So it's a real good toss-up between Haggard and, uh, and Hank Williams Sr. Outside of country music, uh, James Taylor probably is, you know, my guy that I'd that I love to listen to, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, big fan of the, the late 70s. Uh, Arena Rock groups, the ones that had the real big theater shows like Kiss and Queen, those people there. I mean, I, I really enjoyed the fact that that you got there, well, you got your A-track then or your cassette then, but when you went to see the show, you could have never dreamed that what was on that was what you were going to see, and they made them totally opposite of each other, just, just more. All you gotta do is go out there and just, if people can close their eyes and just hear the CD, they can even give them 15, 16 bucks off that concert ticket, because they've already bought the CD. That was the thing about Queen and Kiss, when you went and paid your money, it was like, my God, this is something I never even thought was gonna happen. And that's hopefully what our shows are. I you know, see that you are you're involved in every aspect of your career. Does that make you a perfectionist or a control freak? I'm a control freak, and I can tell you why. Because the record label's got 400 other artists. Management's got three or four other artists. All my crew guys can go work for somebody else. And all the people out there have other artists that they like to listen to. But this is my one shot. So if I bomb, if I go out, the guy I want to yell at and cuss and scream at is that man in the glass. Country Western have been, um, I mean, booming, no right. question about it. But you took country western to a new level. It's like country western pop. How'd you change country western? Because you definitely did it. Well, I don't know if, if you're going to accept this, because to me it's, it's total honesty, okay? All right. Um, and I don't know why it was me, but definitely divine intervention. I mean, I can sit here and we can go down a list of five or six things that I tried 
everywhere I could to get out of. And it turned out to be five of the six biggest things that made my career what it has been. Uh, I did not want to sing a song called Friends in Low Places. Now, I cannot sing, I cannot leave without singing a song called Friends in Low Places. I mean, they, they would burn the bus, you know, if I did that. And I'm very happy for that. Uh, I did not want to sing the dance. Mm -hmm. Did that. Uh, the things like that, I just... And no modesty, just all honesty. Yes. I would love to see how far my career would be if I hadn't gotten in the way of it a couple of times. So I'd like to take credit for it. The only thing I will take credit for is the assemblage of people that we have. I am not the best there is. But I tell you what, I will put that crew up against anybody. They are the best that has been in country music. Well, that's fine because they are, but they can't make the crowd go crazy. They don't sell tickets. Yeah. I don't know, man, when, when you're sitting there and... No, no, they, they, don't, don't, they don't toss the water in the air all right, and the crowd go crazy. <laughs> I've seen it on video, so you can't lie to me. So what is it? How did you come up with that? You know, it's, it's a whole thing about the sound and the vision thing. I have never, ever heard anybody come on from a concert and says, Hey, man, you're not going to believe this. This guy played the most wonderful G diminished chord right in the middle of the song. I've never heard anything like it. <laughs> so they don't do that. What it is, they come on and says, and they're hearing the song on CD. They go, oh, man, oh, here's where we ran over to shake hands with that guy, slipped and just busted his ass. That was, that was. <laughs> you know, that's what they want to do. That's what they want to see. My dad told me, he said, son, you can always give them money back, but you can't give them back your time. So give them a good memory in, re in return of it. And uh, that's been the plan. You are really a big part of your dad. I can see Yeah, that. man, because you quote him so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> Who are you most like? Your mom or your dad? Uh, also, you got to be like your mom because she was a singer. Yeah. You, know, you didn't mention that. Uh, you didn't tell the people about that. My mom was a, was a, was a recording artist um, in the mid-50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, she sang what she called was pop then. I mean, it's just stone country, you know, now if you listen to it. But uh, she's... And I think that... Uh, Barbara Streisand and Public Whitney Houston are just what I think are female vocalists. I mean, just big female vocalists. And that you can call it prejudice or whatever you want, but I think my mom is right there. She can sing. And uh, I feel like I'm one of the six reasons mom gave it up. And even though she swears that her six kids didn't why she gave it up, I still felt like that. So... Yeah, man, when I got my record deal and things started for us, it was like, yeah, man, I felt like, I felt like I was the reason mom quit running the race. And then all of a sudden I woke up one day and said, I don't know, man, maybe she just passed the baton. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like my mom. I mean, I see They're a lot alike. You give me a lot of luck. I see when you talk about them. Yeah. You belong with me, not her. Real. I'm a family man. Career hasn't always been just uh, great. I mean, you've had some controversy, and uh, especially for uh, the, the music video that you made for the, the song "From the Road." Yeah. Uh, and uh, Mr. Frank, where you handled wife's um, abuse and the thunder roll. I've got to do what my heart tells me to do. And my heart tells me i got to sing about real things. And if real things are controversial, then I think we all need to take a serious look at how we're living. When they banned the video on a lot of the, the stations, and how did you feel? Oh, you it crushes you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just like, oh, because you think you're doing a, a piece that you, I mean, that you're very proud of, and you want to show, you know, the world, you know, what you believe in and stuff. It's the same way, you know, when they burn your CDs. 
same way when uh, you know they burn your your pictures and stuff. I would think the one thing that that probably a lot of people feel is is um, people that are celebrities or sports figures have no feelings. You, you're something. You're you're a country boy from. I don't want to say it like yeah, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> But with big city thoughts, at the same time, you're not removed from what's going on. And um, what is it now? And we're about to leave each other. What is it that you want people to know about Garth Brooks that they may not know right now? Oh, man, uh, I'm a real person. Don't do anything for to try and hurt anybody. I don't do anything out of a money-oriented decision. So if you hear or read something about me that says I'm a greedy bastard or, or you know, I did something wrong, I, I would appreciate it. If you think it's something I wouldn't do or thinks it's something bad, I'd appreciate you giving me the benefit of the doubt and trying to find out a little more about it, I guess, because it's going to sound stupid and corny, but what you think of me means a lot to me. What that person in Akron, Ohio, that, you know, or works behind a typewriter all day, male or female, thinks about me, means exactly the same. That's what you think about mm -hmm. me. And although you can't live your life for other people, uh, is it wrong? I guess it's wrong for me to, is, to want this, but I really, really, really want people to understand what I do. What do you do when you're 21 years old, 7 foot 1, weigh 300 pounds, and people are willing to pay you $40 million to dunk basketballs? If your name is Shaquille O'Neal, you could just sit back and enjoy it. But not Shaq. He's embarked on a recording career. He's acting and has a half dozen other interests. We travel to Orlando, Florida to see what's really behind the Shack Attack. I heard you like to come out here to the dock and hang out and, and get away from people, huh? Yeah, when I'm having a bad day, I just come come out, sit on the water, take my little fishing pole, stick it in the water, see what I can catch. <laughs> you a fisher? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> I'm not a fisher. I hate worms, too. <laughs> What what you do? Reach down in there and just grab one out if you yeah, want one. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about when you come out here? Uh, nothing really. I just come to relax, get away, take little naps, and just you know, think about my life and just think about what I have to do to become a better person, better player. You're famous. You're rich. Who's helped you to handle all the pressure that goes along with that? I've been receiving media attention since age 15. Went to a real small high school before I got there. Basketball team was down. Then when I got there, we went 35-1 uh, my first year, 36-0 my second year. And, you know, 6'11 kid, first team All-American, McDonald's All-American. I started receiving media attention. Then when I went to college and played with Chris Jackson and uh, Stanley Roberts, the media was on us. So I had my trials and tribulations with the media back then. So I think that's why I'm so successful. Now, is that why kids just love you because uh, of your smile? I think they love me, you know, because of my, uh, my personality, my sense of humor. Uh, I think they can relate to me more. <laughs> let's talk about your family and let's talk about your smile because. Uh, I'm, I get my smile, my personality from my mother, and uh, I'm strong like my father. So explain your family situation, what you get from your mom and your dad. Someone told me I'm sort of like you. I have a nice smile like you. And my answer is just like yours. I get my smile from my mother, and I get my mean, strong attitude from my father. And uh, I can remember when, when, when at times I wasn't having fun. A coach or a friend would always say, smile, like Magic Johnson. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. Um, you being strong, your dad being strong, did you guys kind of bump heads sometimes? Uh, no, never. 
uh, I respect my father. Some people don't understand him. I'm a soft-spoken guy. Because, you know, when he talks, he kind of yells. And that's because he's been in the Army for so long. And uh, the job he had, you know, he, he used to yell at the young guys. To me, there's nothing like a quiet chat with my son Shaquille. He always taught me, don't listen to how he says, just listen to what he says. Take it to the horn, Shaquille. I got to get into the dirt. Is there a special woman in your life? Yes, she knows who she is. <laughs> <laughs> no names. <huh? laughs> no. um, how that come about, man? How, how can you trust a woman? I mean, you have everything. Uh, so you have to somehow say, man, uh, do they like me for me? Or do they like me for uh, what I have? So what's the process that you go through? This? You just have to feel it. I mean, there really is no process that you go through. I mean, you, you just have to feel it. I mean, if you meet a person and they ask you to uh, pay their rent and, and do all that, then you kind of know what they're about. Mm -hmm. Have you been through that yet? Of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Now, I, I heard you like older women, so she must be older than you. No, she's not older woman. No. She's my age. Okay, okay. Well, I see you, you smile like, Erg, okay, get off of that. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> yeah, quickly. How you like having your own game like this, man? It must be, it must be something. Jumping, jumping. Jumpin'. I can do a lot of things on here that I can't do in the real court, like, like flipping the air three times before I dunk. <laughs> Flip eight threes in a row. <laughs> when did you start playing basketball? I started at age uh, nine. My father. He was a coach for DY that uh, stands for Dependent Youth Activities. And I was an all-sportsman to play uh, football in football season, basketball, and, and baseball. I took it seriously when I was 13 because mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, bigger than everybody and I was tall. And I, one day I was watching Dr. J and he just came to learn and dunked on somebody. <laughs> I said to myself, I want to do that. And, and I used to go to the gym in Wildfield in West Germany, just play every day. And that's how you got into wanting to dunk because you watched Dr. J dunk? So I saw him dunk, but I really didn't start dunking until my uh, senior year in high school. I was uh, 6'11 and 11 grade. I had bad knees when he was always hurting. I used to think about it and I just couldn't dunk. Then I used to go to the gym with the older guys and they used to be a punk and they used to criticize me. But instead of taking it the wrong way, I just kind of developed that, that, that madness inside of me. I ain't no punk. So when I get the ball, I just dunk. Jack, you have accomplished so much. What new goals have you set for yourself? Well, I would like to uh, become a better person as well as a better player, and I would love to win a couple of championships. So when I retire, I want to retire on top, because I like when sports com commentators say he was a great player, but he didn't have any championships. And, you know, that's what they said about me in college. He was a great college player, but he didn't get it done. So when I retire, I would like to have six championships. I want to beat your record. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> yeah, because Michael teased me. I got three in a row, and then I teased him. Well, I got five, and now you say you are six. So when we all be sitting around, you say you have more than all of us, right? You never so close. It's totally wrong. Neon, um, please try not to step on the children. Okay, all right. But tell me about the acting. Did you enjoy uh, acting in, in the movie? It was fun. I thought it was going to be hard, and I just went out and did the best that I could. And you know, so far, I'm getting positive uh, vibrations. Uh, Steve uh, Gutenberg, mm -hmm. Mahoney, and our uh, police academy. He always kids me. Says, "I'm uh, going to take my job away from you, bro. Take my <laughs> job away." Want to play basketball? Will you try to get me in college? No. Be honest. You can have and buy anything that you want in life. How do you keep yourself in check? Well, uh, I'm not a very materialistic person. So I have a little bit of clothes, I have a house, I have a couple cars, and uh, when you're dealing with money, you have to uh, take money, you have to take half and put it away, and take half of the half and put it away, and then play with the other half. So you have three quarters stored away, and you can play with the other one quarter. I read somewhere where you said you're not worried about making money. What you're worried about is keeping it. Right. What do you mean by that? Uh, people today, uh, they uh, try, to, try to turn 40 million into 400 million, and that's how they lose all their money. They, they invest, they don't invest wisely. So I'm gonna invest wisely. Don't take too many risks and I should be okay. Thanks 
for watching. See you next time. Travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. One pass lets you earn free travel faster than any other airline. That's the difference on Continental. Let's go. That's right. Let's, Let's go. go. Uh, I don't remember it. I'm bad <laughs> with math. <laughs> Let me see the three-point shot. Uh, three-point shot. Nothing. Oh! I mean, you Is won't. this a regulation basket? You made me. I am very irritated. <laughs> I'll play a zone on you. Uh, always go to the weak spot. Put the book. Go. Book is out. <laughs> that was a lucky shot. What? Lucky shot.